Okay, welcome to our presentation on a vertical jump. Um, on the following slide, we've got an example of a vertical jump. The vertical jump is important in many sports where gaining height is an advantage. Sports like basketball or AFL require the attainment of height to beat an opponent to a ball. The series of movements that produce a vertical jump can be broken down into distinct phases. The jump begins with the preparatory phase, which involves flexion at the knee and hips, and dorsiflexion of the ankle. This is followed by the takeoff phase, in which these joints extend to generate force into the ground, beginning with the hip, followed by the knee and plantar flexion of the ankle. Once the feet leave the ground, the airborne phase begins, during which no additional force can be generated. The maximum vertical height of the jump is determined by the force generated prior to leaving the ground. The landing phase begins when the feet return to earth and continues until the body is back in standing position. So mechanically, the aim of the vertical jump is to generate force to produce maximum elevation of the body's mass, followed by a coordinated landing feet first with the body in balance. The breakdown of critical elements within the vertical jump revealed two major facets. Achievement of maximum vertical displacement and successful injury prevention through impact absorption. With respect to intrinsic factors, the latter aspect is based around mus muscle flexibility as well as deep eccentric contraction of the lower limbs in an attempt to increase the time and angular distance over which the impact force is decreased. Ground reaction force and floor composition are also important extrinsic factors in injury prevention of the vertical jump. Furthermore, Three major determinants for ma maximum vertical displacement are flight, balance and takeoff velocity. Takeoff velocity is one of the most important factors, where synchronous lever-like movements generate rotational torques that are translated into rectilinear motion. It is imperative that relevant segments are moved together to produce optimal torques for projection. Moreover, the eccentric counter movement has been shown to consistently produce greater results. This is a result of the storage of elastic energy in the Achilles and patella tendons and the subsequent release of energy which contributes to a greater angular acceleration. <coughs> However, without balance and control, torque cannot be effectively translated into rectilinear motion, as some of the force may contribute to other forms of movement. For example, without good balance, centre of gravity may move beyond the base, producing horizontal displacement. Thus, Success is determined by being able to produce the greatest balanced takeoff velocity, in turn producing consistent and primarily vertical flight. An adequate arm swing is observed, which is an aspect of technique shown to increase takeoff velocity and ultimately jump performance. The increased velocity of takeoff stems from a complex series of events, which allows the arms to build up energy early in the jump and transfer it to the rest of the body during the later stages of the jump. This energy came from extra work of the shoulder and elbow joints, as well as the hip. This energy was used predominantly for three things. Firstly, to increase the kinetic and potential energy of the arms at takeoff. Secondly, to store and release energy from the muscles and tendons around the ankle, knee and hip joint. And lastly, to pull on the body through an upward force acting on the trunk at the shoulder. Furthermore, his arm swing is timed well with the synchronous force generation at his legs and in turn, the release of tensile energy in his patella and Achilles tendons. Thus, arm inertia can work simultaneously with lower limb acceleration. This is evident as there is little knee extension and angular displacement until the arm swing begins to work in an upward direction. To further improve performance, a greater deal of arm swing is proposed to further load the muscles and tendons of the lower limb, primarily the Achilles and patella tendons. Furthermore, a greater arm swing will allow the trunk to be set at a greater angle of inclination and thus be able to perform more work as it has a greater capacity for extension and thus further contributing to an increase in takeoff velocity. The hypothesized takeoff and landing center of gravity is indicated in the snapshots. In these, it is further evident that the subject travels forward during the flight phase of the jump. At takeoff, the proposed center of gravity is near the edge of the jumper's base as well as being in front of the axis of ground reaction forces produced through the body's lever-like movements. 
in turn producing a torque which rotates the body as well as translational motion, resulting in suboptimal vertical projection. However, it is also noted that upon landing, the subject's center of gravity is very near to the center of its base, indicating adequate balance. To mediate this misplaced force contribution to rotation and translational motion, the center of gravity should be as close as possible to the center of its base, as well as being in line with the ground reaction force. To achieve this, the subject should alter the timing of segments so that takeoff occurs when the torso is more extended and the ground reaction force is as close as possible to the center of gravity. Throwing arms up higher and earlier may also aid in tilting the trunk further in a posterior direction during takeoff. A good aspect of his technique is that he keeps his head and neck extended during the preparation and takeoff phases. This results in his center of gravity being located more directly above his knees, hips and ankle joints than if his head was more forward. This is important because it means more of his body mass is located above the direction of the ground reaction force generated when his legs push into the floor. The closer in alignment these two things are, the more that force can act to translate his body mass vertically rather than into other planes, assuming the ground reaction forces are acting perpendicular to the ground. This is important in achieving maximal height from the jump. If there is a misalignment between his centre of gravity and the ground reaction forces produced, a torque may be created which rotates his centre of gravity, leading to translation of his body mass in planes other than the vertical, which would detract from maximum height being gained. Another positive aspect of his technique is the degree of knee and hip flexion and ankle dorsiflexion he attains during his preparatory phase. This means a greater amount of angular distance these joints can travel during takeoff, which serves to increase the time period over which force is generated and can lead to a greater amount of force produced overall. Here though we think it might be possible for him to alter his technique to improve jumping performance. While he does seem to get down into his knees quite effectively producing an angle of around 98 degrees, we would encourage him to sink deeper still while in his preparatory phase in order to enhance force production. We would want him aiming to produce something around 90 degrees to be on the safe side of not placing undue strain on his knee joints. Research modelling points to increased knee flexion leading to higher jumps, however it also suggests that deeper squats can interfere with segment timing during the jump, which could also affect his performance. Keeping this in mind, we would encourage the subject to explore different degrees of knee flexion to try to identify an optimum one. Another good aspect of his technique occurs when he is airborne. When he is travelling through the air, he minimises movement of body segments and keeps his limbs still and parallel. This is important because once he has left the ground, he has no more capacity to generate upward momentum. Keeping his body mass still ensures that the upward momentum he begins with is not transformed into linear or rotational movement into other planes. Were he to move his body segments sharply, especially the more distal ones, Torques could be created at his centre of mass that could throw his trajectory away from the linear and prevent him from attaining optimum jump height. The subtle movements he does make occur mainly once he reaches peak height and during his descent, and these serve to help him maintain balance, allowing a safer, more coordinated landing. Also good is the way he prepares to land. He contacts the ground with ankles plantar flexed and knees that are maximally extended without being locked. This is good because it maximizes the capacity of these joints to reduce his momentum by increasing the angular distance they can travel while doing so. This translates into a greater time over which the impact force can be dissipated. This is important because it leads to less force being placed on his limbs over time as he contacts the ground. This helps him to minimize the chance of injury upon landing, as does having his knees not locked into extension, which could prove catastrophic to his ability to land safely. To build on this, we would encourage him to dip further into his knees while landing in order to get a larger range of motion throughout his joints as he slows down. If he can increase the time spent during the landing phase, then it should result in less peak forces acting on his frame and maximise the safety of the landing. If practical, such as in the instance of a gymnast landing, the subject's arms could remain at their sides until all movement ceases. This minimises the risk of injury through increasing stability via two long counterbalancing arms which can correct any movement, abnormalities or errors during the landing phase of the jump. 
This should greatly reduce the risk of injury for the subject. It should be noted that a one-size-fits-all approach should not be taken when considering these training interventions as individual morphology and technique often varies. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation.